These green lines represent if the third wave is equal to the first wave, it would take gold to 2566, a 1.236% extension to about 2600. And if it's what's called an extended third wave, it could go as high as a 1.618% extension. And that's getting you, uh, you know, just close to uh, 2675. Now, here's the key. That being said, even though we're, we believe that gold could shoot up substantially higher, there is a fractal quality to Elliott Wave. Recent significant profit taking in gold had an outsized effect on silver prices. However, market volatility is starting to calm down with growing expectations that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates by the end of the quarter. This week, the World Gold Council, WGC, published its gold demand trends for Q2 2024. Despite record prices, the organization saw record demand, driven by OTC investment from family offices and wealthy individuals, as well as continued demand from central banks. Gary Wagner, editor at goldforecast.com, delves into recent shifts in the gold and silver markets while analyzing Elliott Wave patterns. Wagner predicts that following a deep correction, gold is likely to enter a strong third wave bull run, with potential price targets up to $2,675. Technically, long-term charts indicate corrective pullbacks for gold, but risk aversion and the potential for broadly lower interest rates continue to support gains for the yellow metal. Wagner expresses that Wave 3 will exhibit a fractal quality, stair-stepping up in smaller increments. Regarding the Federal Open Market Committee meeting, Wagner predicts a dovish tone, interpreting it as an indication of accommodative policy and a readiness to initiate a series of interest rate cuts. Gold completed a strong second quarter in 2024, hitting multiple new highs in April, May, and July. However, in June, the metal retreated slightly as U.S. interest rate cut forecasts were pushed out and physical demand softened in response to high prices. The rebound in July appears driven by the market's renewed optimism about U.S. rate cuts. Now we present clips of Gary Wagner's insights from his recent interview. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. The chart that we have up is a gold chart and we're looking at this is, was a full count up to five and that five, of course, you can see finished here. And then we went into a correction. The correction that unfolded was the descending top flat bottom that we've talked about. We've identified this pattern twice now. We also talked about how once gold broke above this upper level resistance line right here that's drawn from a series of lower highs it's called a thrust and i explained it last week as if you think of winding up a spring every time it bounces from the high to the low that spring tightens and so when it does break above this it releases energy and you get a sizable move fairly quickly and that's what we witnessed and so this is what i'm labeling as our wave one our wave two saw gold correct from this high here at about this is december gold now a uh, 2529 down to these lows at about 2400 that was actually uh, almost a 78 percent retracement exceedingly deep correction it's a strong correction but acceptable what cannot happen is for this low to go below this point or the starting point of uh, the wave one. And I now believe that we are in a wave three. Typically, when we do basic models for a wave three, wave one is what is called a benchmark wave. So once we have that in place and the wave two is completed, then we can start plotting where a third wave could go to. And it's also how I came up with the a forecast for the end of the year and Q1 last time is I measured the distance from 2353 up to 2527 and began a FIB extension from 2403. So these green lines represent if the third wave is equal to the first wave, it would take gold to 2566 a 1.236% extension to about 2,600. 
And if it's what's called an extended third wave, it could go as high as a 1.618% extension. And that's getting you, uh, you know, just close to uh, 2675. Now, here's the key. That being said, even though we're, we believe that gold could shoot up substantially higher, there is a fractal quality to Elliott Wave. So within a impulse wave three, you can then subdivide it into a smaller count, typically five. You can get a three count, but so this wave three can be looked at as a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. So it's going to stair step up. And the key to what we're looking at is there's a couple of golden rules in Elliott Wave. And one of them is wave three cannot be the shortest of any of the impulse waves, which is why when we do our upside prediction, we look at a minimum of a one to one relationship between this wave and the current wave three. But it's exciting times that we have this kind of potential. It allows us to be effective traders because we can look at the fundamentals at play. In other words, my belief is that the tone of the conclusion of the FOMC meeting will be interpreted as dovish. It will be interpreted as accommodative and that they are ready to initiate interest rate normalization. They do that by cutting rates the first time. But as we talked about on uh, the last show, it's so much more than that because it's not a single rate cut. It's a series of rate cuts between now and the end of 2026 to normalize interest rates. Gary Wagner notes that while technical patterns are crucial, they ultimately reflect the fundamental factors driving the market. He expects that a reduction in inflation might lead the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates, which would likely benefit both gold and equities. On Wednesday, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell hinted at the central bank's first rate cut in four years, citing progress towards lower inflation and a cooler job market. Despite calls from some economists and politicians for an immediate cut, the Fed maintained its key interest rate at a 23-year high of 5.3%. Powell mentioned that if inflation continues to decline, a rate reduction could be considered at the Fed's next meeting on September 17th to 18th. According to Wagner, lower borrowing costs would boost business investment and make gold more attractive compared to fixed income assets. He also emphasizes the importance of adjusting trading models to align with current market conditions. Let's get back to the interview. I am a market technician, but I believe that fundamentals obviously drive the market. Uh, a market doesn't move to a certain point because the technical um, theories and studies you're using suggest that. They suggest that price point because it's a logical move based on the fundamentals. So the first thing to create a trading model is to look at the fundamental environment and decide if, take for example, the last inflation report. We were under the assumption that the inflation report would show that inflation has cooled slightly and lower inflation makes it more opens the door let's say for the federal reserve to actually beginning to cut rates because they need to see certain criteria met and they want to get inflation to their two percent target one of the interesting things that chairman powell said recently and this was at the uh, economic club of washington and they asked him if are you going to cut rates in September? And his response was typical Fed speak. He says, well, I'm not going to address that, but I will tell you that we're not going to wait till inflation gets to 2% before we cut rates. That's what I mean by Fed speak. He didn't say, yes, we're going to cut rates in September, but he also opened the door for a rate cut because inflation isn't at the 2% target, but they have the confidence that their moves that they have done, the restrictive monetary policy of raising rates 11 times and then pausing uh, about a year ago has got a lag in that it takes time to work itself through the economy. So by saying that they're not going to wait till inflation hits that 2% target was a veiled way of saying that you know, we're ready to cut rates. And so it's reading between the lines. So if you have the belief that 
a report is going to yield a certain outcome. And you also have knowledge that typically that is bullish or bearish on a market. In other words, when interest rates begin to get cut, it's going to provide strong bullish tailwinds for both gold and equities. In, in terms of equities, the less amount there is to the cost of borrowing capital for a business to grow, the more they're likely to take on development projects and to move out into the future and spend the money now in order to capture it later on. In the case of gold right now, gold doesn't yield interest. So interest rates were down at a quarter percent or a half a percent. Gold was a pretty attractive asset class because you, you know, you're taking risks, but you can make a, a decent return. But once interest rates went up to 5%, now the investors are looking at, I have a guaranteed fixed return of 5% with no risk, whether it's a, a CD in a bank or whether it's a bond and take very little or no risk, or I can have a substantial or reasonable amount of risk and not have that same guaranteed return, I'm going to not see gold as an attractive of an asset class as it is when interest rates move down. And so that's why I'm bullish for both gold and US equities, that is rate cuts is what I'm referring to. So as long as you believe that to be the case, that's how I would create a model. Always go ahead and back test it, always work with it to make sure that it it has decent results when you back test it and then realize that just because it performed on paper historically doesn't guarantee it's going to do the same thing in the future. Uh, nothing does. And so it's a matter of feeling comfortable with the techniques that you develop. Uh, you can work with, with, you know, market managers, whether it's a fund or other institutional traders that will do that on your behalf. Um, or develop a model on your own. After reaching new all-time highs in 2024, the outlook for gold prices in 2025 remains optimistic, with many analysts anticipating further record-setting performances. Factors such as U.S. interest rates, the dollar, the upcoming U.S. presidential election, ongoing conflicts in Ukraine and Israel, central bank purchases, and increased consumer demand in China will all influence gold prices in 2025. How do you think upcoming Federal Reserve decisions will affect your investment strategy in gold and silver? Share your thoughts on Gary Wagner's predictions in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications for more updates. Thank you for watching.